what is a narrative? What is the difference between a narrative and a story? These distinctions are crucial in order for us to get to the reality of a collective healing and not sit in the space of back and forth argumentation. So while a story is an account of, of real people or imaginary people and events, a narrative is about the choice of which events to relate and in what order. Narrative is about how we choose to tell a story. And we apply different narratives to the same story all the time. That differentiation is crucial because that means that in the world of narrative, where the choice to include or omit, the choice to be silent or to speak, that doesn't just communicate a story, it shapes a people. It shapes how a people is seen and how they see themselves. And it is that work of reckoning with how narrative about oppressive systems has shaped how we see ourselves and how we see each other. It is from that work that as a former journalist, I choose to look specifically at how the narrative of the um, emotional shows and shapes up in our work and in our worlds. When we think of the word emotional, the story of emotions is often that they are reduced to being not important, that they are negated, that they are gendered, and they are not to be trusted, that um, they are not part of what is a reliable sense of power or structure. In my work of creating a racial healing roadmap, I wanted to look specifically at the power of the emotional and to bring language to how the emotional is a crucial part of a narrative that upholds oppressive systems. There can be no emotional justice without the equal division of emotional labor. The reason this is crucial is these oppressive systems of enslavement and apartheid and colonialism rested on unequal labor, that there were a whole group of people doing the labor, and there was a group of people who were the beneficiaries of that labor. Importantly, the emotional worldview that has shaped so many of us is that the idea of one person being the leader, one person being the le learner, means that there is an expectation that is always one group doing the emotional labor, being fixed, in other words, being taught, being shaped, and another group leading that charge. That cannot take us to collective healing. And when we talk about collective healing, we're talking about developing a process and a practice that moves and lasts beyond the length of a workshop, but is actually generations deep. This is our work to do. So we are the healers we have been waiting for. We are the dismantlers we have been waiting for. This is emotional justice. Our training takes account of the narratives that have shaped us, that have led to this notion of who gets to be the learner and who gets to be the leader. And in developing this uh, international institute that is here in Ghana, we work across the continent, but also in the US and in the UK, developing these resources through projects and training and thought leadership with universities and foundations in the US, with teaching institutions in the UK, developing um, um, projects here in Ghana, all of which are designed to say that our collective healing requires a specificity a nuance and a detail that understands the power of the emotional in order to transform a narrative that has been singular, but has been devastatingly effective in shaping all of us, black, brown, white, indigenous. We all have to unlearn the language of whiteness and the way forward is emotional justice.